Well, there's an old saying that says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But what about the stuff that does kill you? Any chemical can hurt an organism uh, in, in the right dosages. Uh, too much of anything is, is bad. So uh, we need some way of measuring how much uh, to, of any chemical is required to actually like start hurting somebody. Uh, how else can we come up with regulations and how much an industry is allowed to pump up in the air? How much are uh, the, the water, uh, water purification plants can put any or allow any amount of chemical into the water? Uh, they need to know exactly how much chemical um, can start hurting people. So the, the way we go about doing that, kind of sad, um, is with literal lab rats. Um, we're not going to test humans to see how humans are affected by, by toxins, because obviously there's some moral problems with that. Uh, there's a slightly less moral problem with doing it on rats. So um, poor rats. Uh, we, uh, rats are used, by the way, because their, their body chemistry is so much like ours. Their body responds to things in almost identical ways to humans. So they are the, the perfect guinea pig on how to uh, see how much uh, different things will affect us. So um, we have slain many rats trying to come up with this data, um, but we've learned uh, the uh, um, amounts required to hurt people with many, many chemicals. Now. Lots of people are affected in different ways from chemicals. Like one chemical that kills somebody at this level might only make them sick, make a different person sick at this level. Like, how is that possible? Um, well, every, every human being acts differently. So it all comes down to an average. Um, and the number that comes out is called the LD50. The LD50 stands for the lethal dose at for 50% of the population. So if you were to feed a certain amount of any chemical um, to a whole population of organisms, 50% of them would die if you gave that dosage. Um, around 50%. Again, it's just an average, so it could be more, it could be less, could it be exactly 50? But nonetheless, um, that's, that's uh, our measuring stick when it comes to toxicity. At what level will 50% of the population die. Check out this sweet table um, that quite accurately describes a lot of the, the LD50s for a lot of organisms. Uh, for example, like the, here's the lethal doses. Here's the common name of the chemical, the toxin that is in there, that, uh, that's the one in question, and then the lethal dose, so how much of this stuff is required to actually hurt or uh, to, to actually kill 50% of a population. So, and then also, interestingly enough, um, some toxic responses over here that I can, you can pause and read if you are so inclined. Um, but anyway, some of them here, um, like for example, cola, uh, caffeine has a lethal dose. Like after a certain amount of caffeine, uh, the, the body can't handle it anymore. So the LD50 for caffeine is 140 milligrams per kilogram. So uh, say it was a one kilogram rat. If you fed that one kilogram rat 140 milligrams, there's a 50% chance that rat will die. If the rat was a two kilogram rat, you would need 280 milligrams of rat to achieve that 50% chance. Um, human beings, like say somebody that's 220 pounds, um, they would be 100 kilograms. So a 100 kilogram uh, human being would require, well, 100 times 140 milligrams, um, which would work out to be um, 14 grams. If you had 14 grams of caffeine, that's not all that much. Um, certainly nowhere near the amount that's even in coffee. Um, if you fed uh, uh, 14 grams uh, to a 100 kilogram human, there's a 50% chance that that human would die. And uh, here's the reason why. Uh, like you, the, a renal failure, that's from like the kidneys, the psychosis, um, they're 
uh, they would start bleeding on the inside, their heart rate would just be going crazy, there'd be so much uh, of this chemical floating around the body that, like, you know the energy that comes from caffeine, uh, eventually it could lead to the brain just not being happy at all and the body going into convulsions, like, it's just, that's terrible, like, that <laughs> death by coke, not, not the best way to go. So for us to understand, uh, like, the LD50, uh, we also need to understand, like, how we can measure, uh, different ways of measuring an amount of chemical in, uh, that is affecting things. So, uh, for example, uh, we can measure things in parts per million, parts per billion, and parts per trillion. Um, we also, we need to learn uh, how to calculate this skill. Um, so, we're going to talk about that. So, if we have a concentration of uh, 0.02 grams of salt in 1,000 grams of water, how do we find out in parts per million? So first, you need a proportion between the two. You need to find out uh, almost like a percentage of salt in water. And then, to turn it into millions, parts per million, you would multiply it per million. So multiply it by a million. So how that looks, you always do the amount of solute, that's the stuff that you're dissolving in the top, and then you will have the amount of solution underneath it. So here's your equation, amount of solute um, divided by the amount of solution. Um, and then you will multiply that by one million, one million dollars. And there you go. There's your equation for parts per million. So parts per million is equal to the amount of solute divided by the amount of solution, and then you multiply that by one million. So if I had 0 0.02 grams of salt, and that is being dissolved in 1,000 grams of water, I multiply that by 1 million to find out the parts per million of my salty water. So pull out your calculator, 0 0.02 divided by 1,000, that gives you the proportion of salt to water, and then you multiply that by 1 million to find out the actual number of parts Per million. So in this case, you would have 20 parts per million. Um, so what that means, so 20 ppm, that means if you were to look, if you were to look inside of this glass of water, and you were to pull out um, a million particles, a million atoms, 20 of them would be salt, and the other ninth, uh, of the other um, 999,980 remaining molecules would be water. Um, so the amount of solute to the amount of other stuff. So in this case, it's salt to water. Let's do another slightly more challenging uh, uh, concentration question. So this one is asking about parts per billion of mercury inside of a three kilogram bag. And then it asks how many grams of mercury there are. So the equation for parts per billion is slightly modified. The difference is that it's parts per B instead of parts per M per million. And then you gotta add three more zeros there because we're looking at billions, not millions. All right, so parts per billion. We are given the PPB. Instead, we are asked how many grams of mercury there are. So they're asking about the amount of solute. That's going to be our x. That's going to be our, a value that we're looking for. And then we do know what our PPB is. It's 250. So um, we are going to use the information that we're given here to try and solve what the amount of solute is. We're also told that we have a 3 kilogram bag of water, so this is going to be um, x over 3, so our amount of solute divided by the amount of solution, so our uh, the amount that we're looking for, the amount of mercury divided by the amount of water. And then of course we got to multiply this by 1 billion dollars. 
So, um, oh, one more zero, I think. Now, um, we haven't done any algebra yet um, in mathematics, but the way that you solve uh, um, any algebra problem is to do the reverse of bed mass. So normally when you're solving problems, when you're trying to find a number, you do uh, bed mass in order. When you're trying to solve an equation to get uh, an unknown variable, you're going to do them in reverse. So according to reverse bed mass, the first thing that we need to get rid of, if we want to find out what x is, we need to get x all by itself. So we need to get rid of these other two numbers. There's, one, there's a multiply by a billion and divide by three. So to do that, we need to do the reverse of bed mass. We are going to get rid of the multiplier first and then the divider. So to get rid of this multiplier um, of multiply by one billion, I need to do the exact reverse to it. Um, so if I were to get rid of this one billion, to get rid of it, I'm gonna divide both sides by one billion. So like this that is dividing that whole side by one billion. What I do to one side in math, in, in with equations, I have to do to the other side, since after all, this is an equation, it should all remain equal. So I also need to divide the 250 by one billion. So to multiply by a billion and divide by a billion, those two processes are actually gonna cancel each other out. And then I'll be left with, uh, just the x over three. So my next step will leave me with x over three kilograms. Awesome. And now I need to divide 250 by one billion. So 250 divided by one billion, that gives us 0 0.0000025. So, um, Take this, 0.1234565. So we've got that amount right now. So we still need to finish solving for x. We're trying to find the amount of mercury, the amount of solute. So right now x is being divided by 3 kilograms. To get rid of that divide by 3, you're going to do the reverse to that. So the opposite of dividing by 3 would be multiplying by 3. So you can multiply both sides by 3 kilograms. So multiply this by three kilograms as well. And we'll get x all by itself. So if I take x and multiply it by three and also divide it by three at the same time, that cancels both of these out. I'm just left with my variable. Hooray! So three times uh, 0 0.0000025 will be times three, 0 0.0000075. So that down here. So 75 and then that's going to equal our x. So we found our amount of solute. Now I should also mention that this is kilograms because we did multiply it by kilograms after all. So um, our question remember asks us the amount in grams. So we need to do one final calculation. So there are one thousand grams in one kilogram. So to find out uh, how many grams are in this number of kilograms, we simply multiply it by a thousand to find out the number of grams. So we'll have um, 0. Oops, 0. 1, 2, 3, 7, 5 kilograms multiplied by 1,000 grams per kilogram. And then that will equal our final x. So when we pull that up, we're going to have 75 times 1,000. That gives us with 0 0.000075 grams of mercury. So um, and remember, this is parts per billion. So of course, it should really be a very, very small number. Um, so 0. 0, 0, go away, waste basket, basket, 0, 7, 5 grams of mercury. So we need some sort of like solid line in uh, 
like what levels are okay and what levels aren't. Um, we can calculate the number of parts per million, parts per billion of a substance and then we find out exactly how much will likely kill you. So at a certain level of chemicals you eventually reach a point where it starts becoming lethal, the LD50. Now obviously we don't want to have a regulation that is <laughs> Um, at the LD50. You don't want the legal chemical level of anything to be near um, the LD50 because you're going to have people dying. So the World Health Organization has a, uh, a loose golden rule, they call it, um, a level of acceptable risk. Um, now, you can't prevent everybody from dying. As much as this world would love that to happen, it's naive to believe you can protect everybody. Um, everybody's body is different. P some people are going to respond violently to things, like there's people that are allergic to sunlight and some people that are allergic to things that just... We can't protect everyone. We would love to. Um, so, the, the golden rule, um, which amounts to... Uh, a a reasonable amount of safety, like a high level of safety, um, but also without being completely unreasonable to um, to the natural uh, to just a day, <laughs> like going through a day without having to worry about every single thing being a, a safety check along the way. Um, the golden rule is one in a million deaths for the use of the material. Uh, the use of the the thing. Uh, now, that's not the actual. Um, uh, that's the level that everybody aims for, but that's not the um, the the total end. Uh, generally, about one in ten thousand deaths per year uh, from the thing is kind of the the peak. That is the you not can you cannot legally cross this limit with this material. Um, so, for example, driving a car. Um, car companies cannot produce a car um, that has enough faults in it that in 1 in 10,000 people using that car, they will die per year. That's unacceptable. Um, generally, uh, cars kind of sit about 1 in 300,000 to 1 in 400,000 deaths per annum. Um, depends on the car, obviously, more because some cars are safer than others. Um, but the golden rule that a lot of companies kind of like there some companies standards are way above other things um, And the golden rule that lots of people shoot for is one in a million So if a million people were using uh, this particular product um, or uh, the, Yeah, uh, this particular product then every year one of those people will die um, From that and obviously still not ideal. You don't want people dying, but you have to be realistic crap happens. So let's summarize. Um, there is a chemical level that we have determined as like the danger zone and we call that the LD50. Um, at that certain chemical level, which is fairly high for a lot of chemicals, um, you would kill off half of the people consuming that amount. Um, it's usually measured in grams or milligrams per kilogram. So if I were to eat this many grams of uh, caffeine um, for every kilogram in my body, I would have a 50% chance of dying. Um, so uh, when it comes to measuring chemical concentrations, uh, we have a technique called, me we measure it in parts per million or parts per billion or parts per trillion. And uh, we went over that skill in setting up that equation. It's the amount of solute divided by the amount of uh, solvent, so the stuff that's doing the dissolving or doing like the, the container for the, the, the thing in question. And then you multiply it by either a million or billion or trillion, depending on what level you're looking for. Um, and then finally, we talked about what is an acceptable amount of risk. Uh, you have uh, people that uh, have looked into what is what level of danger is acceptable for the regular population. We call that the acceptable level of risk. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching. Till next time.